So today we're going to talk about hybrid pianos, which are really the best of both worlds. Kind of a merging of old technology and new technology. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Why would somebody consider a hybrid piano? Well, a lot of times there are some stark realities that people have to face. First of all, they have limited space. Uh, in my case, I actually tried to shop for a seven foot piano. And when I took a look and to see, you know, what kind of space I had available in my office where I wanted to put it, that would be the only thing in my office. Basically, I wouldn't have an office at all. So I had to make a compromise. Another thing is maybe you need to be able to play or practice without disturbing others. So you need some kind of a volume control. There is expense associated with tuning. So Depending on the piano you have, you might have to pay between 60 and $120 every six months. Maintenance costs, both of these go toward total cost of ownership of the piano, which accumulates over time. Pianos are not portable. You're not gonna take a seven foot piano and take it on stage with you. There are also a lot of advantages to owning a hybrid piano. For instance, the small form factor. You can fit it in a smaller area. You can use a volume control. You can even use a headphone jack. I have two headphones headphone jacks on mine. You have the ability to switch between multiple tuning methods. So if you're like me and you like exploring Baroque music, you can explore some of the historical tuning methods and all you're doing really is flipping a switch. Uh, so that's interesting. And of course your piano's always in tune. The ability to switch between pianos is really neat. In another video, I'm going to talk about virtual pianos and VSTs, but you can also switch between other instruments. So most hybrid pianos have a choice of instruments like harpsichords or electric pianos or organs, things like that. They have a very low total cost of ownership, actually almost nothing. There's just nothing you have to do to a hybrid piano. And and instead of buying an instrument that might weigh between 900 and 1,200 pounds, you're buying an instrument that probably is going to weigh in between 300 and 400 pounds. So sure, it's not extremely light, but it's light enough that if you had to move it, um, you don't need to call a company to do it for you. And you can do things like record audio directly or indirectly. You can also record MIDI. So there are some advantages to be able to, to do things like that. Let's talk about hybrid pianos. So what we've talked about before are the amazing things that you can do with the sound of a piano. Now let's talk about the touch. And that's something I think that's unique to my audience on this channel. If you're coming to this channel and you're talking about home recording studios, okay. But if you're on this channel, you're probably as sensitive as I am to the way it feels. And when you play an electric piano or a uh, Korg or a Nord and you feel the spring-loaded action and it says hammer weighted, you know, hammer action, graduated weighted action and you're all excited because you're expecting that realism and then you put your hands on it and you're like, yeah, it's the same springy feel. And here's what's wrong with that. You're trying to play something, well, I just mentioned the Scriabin, Prelude even more importantly, which has a lot of tender moments, which you're trying to do with your left hand and a thumb that weighs a ton and a half, and you want to build some tension and then play a very soft note to resolve that tension, and you're doing it with the heaviest finger on your hand. If you try to do that on the hammer-weighted, right, what you're gonna get is this obnoxious sound that bounces out because as soon as your thumb hit the spring, it landed at the bottom of the key bed, which wasn't what you had told it to do. And this obnoxious sound jumps out of the speakers and everybody turns around in the music store that you're playing in and goes, wow, what was that? And now you're talking to the keyboard because you're like, no, 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 you do what I tell you to do. That wasn't what I told you to do. Now everyone's looking at me and it's your fault. Okay, I took that a little far, but that's just how I feel. I want a hybrid piano or whatever piano that I'm playing on, whatever MIDI interface that I'm playing on, to do what I tell it to do, not what it thinks it wants to do. And the same thing if I buy a piano. What you need in terms of the piano action is this. What you're looking at is the action on my hybrid piano. A couple of things I want you to notice about this. Do you see where the fulcrum is? The fulcrum for every key, even on the hybrid pianos, like Kawaii. Kawaii likes to talk about, oh yes, we have a hybrid piano and this. Look at the fulcrum. The fulcrum is right behind the key and it feels like it. 
I'm not going to say like an upright piano. It does feel like a grand piano, but it feels like one of those baby grand pianos. And that's fantastic if you're not a professional pianist, if you're not preparing for a concert or for a jury final or for anything else that's even remotely serious. If you are, and you practice on that piano, when you move from that piano to a concert instrument, your forearms and your fingers are immediately going to tell you, I'm not going to make it through 60 minutes of this because you haven't built up the strength. If you see where the fulcrum is here, there are two things. Number one, you will get a workout on this bad boy. And if you saw the first picture, I'll show it to you again. Do you see where the weights are? Fully weighted. You see the weights on the hammers way back there and the fulcrum point and everything else? You are working on this piano exactly the way you would be working on a nine foot Yamaha CFX concert grand piano. And after four hours of scales and dexterity exercises before you start digging into your program on this beast, you will not be able to open a refrigerator door or open a can of pop. And for me, it was just like my college days. I'm like, oh, it's all coming back now. Holy cow. I started having those little red lines that I used to have in college. If Luis B.O. is watching this video, I'm sure you're familiar with this too. Little red lines there where your fingers start bleeding because you're pounding on them so much that it's starting to separate from the fingernail. This will make that happen. An electric piano of any other kind will not. And so the only difference between this action and the action on a nine foot concert grand is the fact that there's not a hammer on the end, there's a weight on the end. And the weight is precisely the weight of the hammer that would be there. Here are a couple more views of this. This helps you understand something that's a little bit more extraordinary. On the left, you will see the full mechanism of the dampers. So when you press the damper pedal, that whole mechanism lifts up and that weight comes up off the keys and you can feel you know that little shuffle that you feel and through the keys when the dampers get lifted and now the key because that backstop is in a different place that key is acting differently now just like it does on a real piano you need to feel that when you're practicing because that's what you're going to feel on your performance instrument when you sit down and do a jury final or when you sit down and do a performance or something like that we'll talk about the yamaha avant grand n2 first in doing so i'll also sort of introduce you to the idea of what a hybrid piano is and why a uh, hybrid piano brings something to the table. First of all, if you've ever tried to play an electric piano or a portable keyboard or something like that, you've noticed that it just doesn't feel like a real piano. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because when you try to play that kind of a piano, you're you're playing basically against a bunch of springs. An acoustic wooden action on a piano is extremely complex. There are an awful lot of moving parts and every one of these moving parts contribute to the ability for you to translate your emotion and what you're doing with your hands and your arms and your fingers and translate that into how you're swinging the hammer toward the strings and translating that into sound and emotion and music. And you just can't get that done with a set of springs or hinges or, or some of these other things. And what you're looking at here is the Yamaha Avant Grand N2 action. You can see that it's an entirely wooden action. This action was taken out of a Yamaha CFX 9-foot concert grand piano. Take a look at the key end, and that's the pianistic term, for this part right here where the end of the key is. Yeah, And then there's the balance hole more and you can see the balance hole bushing with the red felt here. That is your fulcrum. It's like a seesaw. That's the point at which the key turns. Do you see the distance between the key end and the balance point here? Well, there's several inches there. And if you have a baby grand piano, this is going to be much closer to the key, a few inches closer to the key. And what that does is when you're playing closer to the back edge of the key end, the differences 
much more dramatic in terms of how you're feeling the weight and how you're able to rock that key. It's a very different feeling. On the other hand, when you're playing the key on this piano, and of course when you're playing the key on a concert grand piano, it's a whole different feeling because there's a considerable distance between the fulcrum point established by the balance hole mortise and the key end. And so you might feel that as a heavier action. So that's something that's very interesting about the N2 is if you were blindfolded, you would have an extremely difficult time, maybe impossible, in telling the difference between playing an actual nine foot concert grand and playing the N2, which is a much smaller form factor. Now, I talked a little bit about the piano action and the fact that you can't just throw a couple of springs in a piano um, and, and make it feel the same. Apparently some manufacturers think you can. Companies like Korg and Nord. And I've even seen reviews where the uh, people that play those are convinced that it feels exactly like a piano. And obviously these people are not real pianists. They're, you know, they play popular music and that's a little bit different than trying to play Rachmaninoff or something like that where you really need to have a much more intimate relationship with the piano action. Now, when I talk about the piano action, uh, most pianists understand this. This is what I'm talking about. What you're seeing here is the piano action. So there's a lot going on here. There are a lot of moving parts. I don't want to make this a complex presentation. Um, if I were to name the parts, we'd be here for half an hour. But what I will do is I'll call your attention to the three major levers that are doing the work here, okay? And what you're looking for is you're looking for three linear actions that are moving in opposition to each other. And those are the three main actors in this uh, picture that you're seeing here. The first one is the key. That one's pretty easy. That's the thing you're pressing down here, yeah? The next is the whipping. And that's this thing right here. The third thing is the hammer shank. So you can see the hammer shank is what is driving the hammer itself toward the string so that it strikes the string, okay? So there are some other things. There's the jack, and I'll actually call your attention to the jack. Uh, and there's the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, repetition bar. Uh, there's the backstop. There's the um, damper lever, and there's the damper. We'll talk about all these pieces in just a moment. But these are the main pieces that produce the magic. They, they make the sound happen. Now, one of the things that a pianist knows intuitively, but maybe if you're a pianist, maybe you don't think about this. So I want to call this out. Have you noticed that when you play a key, when you press a key, there's this bump right as you near the bottom of the key? You kind of feel this bump. When you play an electronic keyboard, you don't feel that bump. And that's the first thing that, whether you're thinking about it or not, lets you know you're not playing a piano. You're playing something else. That's called the uh, let off. It's also sometimes called the escapement. And what's happening essentially is uh, there's, there's a let off button and that's this piece of wood right here that is attached to a fixed rail in a piano. And this let off button um, makes contact with the jack. And the jack, it causes the jack to move forward at just the right moment as it's rising toward the string. And when it gets at just the right position where it's propelled towards the string, um, it causes the jack to slip off the knuckle, that's what this is called, it's called the knuckle. So it slips off the knuckle and frees the hammer so that it can swing freely. Now, at that point, the repetition, car, the repetition bar does what it's supposed to do, and the backstop does what it's supposed to do, and it kind of holds that 
uh, if you're still holding the key, it holds that hammer in a position that readies the hammer to quickly repeat the key if that's what you want to do. But that's what you're feeling. You're feeling that bump and that bump is the jack slipping off of the knuckle and that action is produced by the uh, making contact with the let off button. If that didn't happen, the hammer would press onto the string and you would never hear a sound because the fact that it's pressing onto the string would stop the string from vibrating. It needs to be free, it needs to escape from the string in order to allow the string to vibrate. So that let off is something you need to feel in order for your mind to tell you you're playing a real piano. And that's an important part of the action that you want to have if you're if you're trying to find a, an electronic solution to uh, a piano. Now, there's another piece of this as well, and and really good hybrid pianos will also um, automate this part. So, what's going on on the left here? Well, we have something um, that's called the key end felt. That's what this red piece is here. The key end felt makes t makes contact with the damper lever and it pushes the damper lever up. Now notice it doesn't do it until the right moment. Just as the hammer is nearing the string and ready to strike and also just as the jack is about to make contact with the let off button and slip off the knuckle, that's when the damper gets lifted. And the damper gets lifted again to allow the key to uh, the, allow the string to ring. Um, but in terms of what you're feeling, what you're feeling is you're feeling the lifting and, and not only that, but that damper lever is weighted. It's not shown that way in this diagram, but it actually has weights on it because that damper needs to come back down onto the string and it needs to come back down onto that string in such a way that it stops the string from vibrating. And in order to do that, it needs to be weighted, right? So there's a weight there that you're additionally lifting with your finger in a little bit late in the stroke of the key and you're feeling that. So you need to feel the let off. You need to feel the lifting of the damper as you're playing the key. And you're intuitively feeling this when you're playing a piano and when you're playing an electronic keyboard, you're not. Now here's another piece of this. When you lift the damper pedal, and let's take a look at the dampers. When you lift the damper pedal, there's a aluminum rail that lifts all of the damper levers up. And if all the damper levers are up, now when you play the keys, you're no longer feeling that weight laid in the keystroke because they're already lifted up and you notice that. And when you're repeating keys or doing certain things, the key behaves differently and you feel that. Your mind understands all of this and your hands understand all of this. And that's why you tend to play differently when you're playing an electronic keyboard than when you're playing a real acoustic piano. And that's also the reason why why when you try to play an electronic piano, you're never really satisfied. It's never really the same. However, if you play this piano, and this, what I'm showing you here is the Yamaha Avant Grand N2, you won't know the difference because not only are you getting the let off, not only are you getting the full action of the piano, including the whip-in, the repetition bar, the jack, the lever, the positioning of the mortise far from the key end, the weighting. You can see how it's weighted in this picture down here. You can see how it's weighted and the weighting is exactly, I mean, basically they just pulled this action out of the Yamaha. It's the same manufacturing process and the same materials and everything else with only a few minor differences. The material they make the knuckles out of, the material they make the backstop out of, it's the same. The rail, the sostenuto pedal, has an unusual way that it works. It has a bar that rotates and it catches an edge, a lip 
that's on the side of the damper so that when the damper is already lifted, the key has already lifted the damper, it catches it so that they don't fall back. And you feel that as well. And you're able to achieve that mechanically as opposed to trying to achieve that electronically. Well, it's a combination of mechanical and electronic. In any case, all of this literally is happening acoustically with wooden parts, the same way that they've been built for the last hundred years in this piano, even though the sound and that's the only part of this, is being produced electronically. It's the most amazing thing that has happened in the last five years for pianists. You can have a nine-foot concert grand piano that fits in the size of, uh, you know, just a small, small space. And I'll show you mine toward the end of this presentation, but it's, it's just a small footprint about the size of an upright piano. Now, my piano has about five sounds. It has a, you know, Yamaha CFX, you know, concert grand sound. It has about 12 speakers in it. So the sound is quite full. Two of them are 80 watt speakers. The rest of them are 22 watt speakers. It even has a way to open the top of the piano so you can get additional sounds similar to putting a piano on full stick or something like that. And it, it's just fantastic. But it's clearly made for a serious pianist because again, they're not really trying to give you a whole lot of sounds. This piano that I'm about to talk about is also of the Avant Grand series, but it's the N1 UX. This piano has an upright action, but it's also a real wooden action. Now this one, if the other piano was a fine wine from deep within a reserve cellar, this one's beer. So this one not only has kind of a plexiglass piece in the front, so you can actually see the action as you're playing it, which is just fun. It's a great conversation piece. And it has this upright action, so you don't have to be a weightlifter. You know, the, the piano that I have has a pretty heavy action. So when I do dexterity exercises and scales and arpeggios, it's a good workout. It's just like my college days where after four hours of dexterity scale and arpeggios, I can't open a refrigerator door with, with my hand because it just hurts too much. Uh, I can't open a can of pop. It's just like the good old days. So it's like weightlifting. This one, not so much. This one is, is like mashed potatoes. You know, you can play it like any other upright piano. It looks cool. It sounds cool. It's got all kinds of sounds in it. And so it's clearly made to have fun. In fact, I had this crazy idea that I wanted to get one of these as well and put it in the living room so that we could all kind of gather around on holidays and stuff. So this would be my work piano. This is a piano that I would actually play you know, scales and arpeggios and exercises and work on program and, you know, get ready for a performance or a competition or something. And then I would go to that piano if I just wanted to have some fun and that sort of thing. So this is a neat piano. You can see it here in these couple of pictures. There's another piano, and this was one of the first pianos I had started to look at, and that's the Kawaii Novus N10. It's very similar and it has uh, several speakers. You can see that they try to accomplish the same thing. You can see that the action, the, the whipping and the repetition bar and the jack and all of the similar parts that you would expect to find in an acoustic piano. It kind of, to me, looks like they're plastic here. I'm not sure how accurate the weighting of the hammers is just from looking at the picture. I played this and this was the first hybrid piano, the first true hybrid piano I had played. And I was very impressed. I am not partial to the sound of the Kawaii piano, but uh, this is pretty good. And you can see where the position of the mortise bushing is. It's a good distance from the key end. So this, once again, very well weighted and it has a concert grand feel from that perspective. So that's a Kawaii. You can see that this real wood, it has this touch perspective here. You know, you can kind of select things in the cheek block. I find the screen in the cheek block a little distracting because on a real piano, you don't have anything in the cheek block and to see something glowing and staring at you is odd, but that's just my perspective. I don't know. Now, Kawaii made something to be portable, and this I thought was pretty cool. It's called the VPC-1, which stands for Virtual Piano Controller 1, and it is made to be portable. I'll just show you 
what it looks like. It's portable. It's about as portable as it can be. It's 65 pounds. So it's not like you can swing this under your arm and run with it. It's certainly more portable than a nine foot kawaii. This is kind of an interesting idea. There are a couple of things I didn't like about this. One of them is that the top is slightly rounded and I guess they wanted to make it look cool, but you really, I want to put stuff on top of it, like a laptop computer or do some things like that. And they slide off. It also doesn't have have a uh, tray to close onto the keys and I don't understand why they couldn't do that. It does have an attachable music tray. I thought that was pretty thoughtful. So I mean it's a good portable solution if that's what you need. Here is an example of it opened up. Now on the top you can see that they have tried to duplicate the let off. Obviously you, they're not duplicating the damper feeling. Your fingers are gonna know that this isn't a real piano but this is many steps above something like a Korg or, you know, any typical hammer weighted keys. This is a, definitely a step beyond that. This feels much more like a real piano than your typical hammer weighted key set. So from that perspective, it's pretty cool. Also, if you take a look at where the uh, mortise bushings are, you'll see how close they are to the key end. This feels like an upright piano or a baby grand. It does not feel like a concert grand at all. And when you start playing toward the key end, you're gonna notice it feels really weird because you're right next to the fulcrum. Okay, here's an example. Um, over here, they've opened it all up so you can see the action. Once again, this is not a full action like on my M2, but it's better than a poke in the eye with a green banana. And the cost of this thing is $1,800. But my N2 was retails for about 15,000. I picked it up for about 10,000. And it was tax deductible because I bought it from a charity, brand new. This is really interesting. So there is a piano maker that is world renowned right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. The pianos are designed by Michael Spreeman. It is called the Ravenworks Piano. Uh, they are absolutely a staple of the jazz industry today. Um, the Ravenworks 275 is a nine foot concert grand piano that sells for $280,000. I think they had a titanium that sells for $300,000. And of course they make a few smaller grand pianos they don't make any uprights or anything like that. But one of the things that they do is they take the Kawaii that I just showed you, the VPC-1, and they do a lot of things to it to turn it into a much better piano and one that feels a lot more like their Ravenscroft. And then they also sell a Ravenscroft virtual piano. The idea is that if you're like me, and you don't have $280,000 to throw around, but you still want that Ravenscroft sound, then you can drop five or $6,000 and they will buy a Kawaii VPC-1 for you, which normally about $1,800. And then for the extra money, they'll open it up and they'll pull out all of the felt and they'll rework all of the keys and such in it. And what they'll do is they do a 40 hour multi-step process. They'll size the key, the pin, and, the, and balance the rail bushings. They'll add quality piano key end felt instead of the felt that comes with it. They'll do a custom key dip. They'll perform a squaring, spacing, and leveling of each of the keys so that they're all precise. They'll perform a proprietary precision friction analysis and weight placement determination. And they'll reweight all of the keys so that they're exact. They'll do a proprietary bismuth key weighting procedure. And then they manufacture Ravenscroft's uh, bismuth weights and then they'll do a key weight installation procedure so they do all of that and then when they're done they actually wrap it with a wrap and that wrap can be customized so if you want it to have the name of your band or your name on it or some kind of a graphic or a particular color that you like you know they can do any of that stuff because they put a wrap around it and of course they have their Ravenscroft uh, logo um, this is one example and it's fairly plain. This is what it looks like when it's done. And so it's got a USB to host here. That's how, you know, you don't need MIDI uh, for this. And whatever's true about this is also true about the Kawaii VPC-1. So you can connect this directly to your computer. You don't need MIDI. But if you want to use MIDI, you have in and out. And then you've got the damper sostenuto and uh, the VPC-1 comes with a triple pedal system. And you just plug that into this. So that's kind of interesting.
this is my piano. This is my hybrid piano. Uh, this is the Yamaha Avant Grand N2. And you see the, uh, the design up here. That's something that my daughter Crystal bought for me. She's so sweet. Uh, that was just the coolest thing. Very, very thoughtful of her. The bench that came with it is different than the bench I have. That's a Steinway bench, a uh, duet bench that I got. Here are a couple more views. She also got me this uh, scarf and I just put it on top of the piano. It just, you know. And then in this picture here, you can see that I've lifted up the lid, right? So uh, when you want to wake the neighbors or something, right? And pound out a Rachmaninoff uh, Etudes Tableau or something like that. You can do that with this thing. And, uh, and then when my wife yells at me, right? Then I turn the volume down. The fullness of the sound is identical to having a nine foot concert grand in your house on full stick. Playing this at full volume is not practical most of the time, but if everyone is out of the house, I always play it on full volume. It's the most fun I've ever had with my clothes on. It's fantastic. On the left, you can see it with that closed. It comes with a music stand. And remember that this is an electric piano. So I want you to think about like a Korg or a Nord 3 or something like that. You pick that up, it's probably weighing 30 pounds or something like that. And that's supposedly with the hammer action that's really realistic. This weighs 333 pounds and one ounce and almost entirely the action in the piano. That's how realistic it is. So that's my piano. Um, this is the piano I used to have. Uh, it was a Steinway B and this was not a hybrid piano. This was a full on uh, thousand pound uh, seven foot Steinway B piano that I had when I lived in Ahwatukee, Arizona. And I had a room in the house that was big enough for it. And then I had a separate office. So I was able to do that. And that was back in 1999. And then in 2005, I sold it because I ended up moving to a smaller house and I just didn't have a room for it anymore. And it just absolutely broke my heart. I put a lot of work into this piano too. I had some work done on the lower half of the uh, dampers so that they stopped the sound a little better on the bass strings. Steinway, after CBS bought them, kind of had this issue where uh, I call it oinking. So if you do staccato in the bass, it goes doink, doink, and it has this sound that sort of continues beyond the damper on the bass strings. And when I, I play a lot of Bach, and when you play Bach with wet staccato, you get this oinking sound that make, made me want to scream. And so I literally had them redo all of the felt on the bottom, and I actually found one of the last few sets of dampers from a pre-CBS piano and had them installed. So it was a very unique piano. And Unfortunately, I sold it to someone in Tucson and uh, broke my heart. But anyway, it is what it is. And I'm happier now because like I say, I have a nine foot concert grand piano in my house, albeit with the help of technology. And I didn't have to pay $150,000 for it. You know, that's one of the advantages uh, of hybrid pianos is you can get the best of both worlds without shelling out a quarter million dollars for a piano. And you can record MIDI, you can combine it with virtual pianos, which I'll do another video on virtual pianos. I've got, I haven't added it up, but I think I've got about $2 million worth of pianos that I have the option of playing the stuff that I record through. And it's it really gives you a degree of freedom that's kind of cool. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you find it educational. If you have any questions or comments, Feel free to leave those comments and uh, I will try to answer those questions. And uh, thanks for watching the video and remember to like and subscribe.